but why would those who are specifically leaner and more metabolically healthy have the highest likelihood of exhibiting this lean mass hyperresponder profile? Well, for that, I want to talk to you about large fat cells and traffic jams. This is a freeway, freeway A, and now we've got freeway B. And I want you to pretend that you're a truck driver, and I'm telling you, trucks are so dangerous. There's been so many studies that show how bad trucks are. And then you look at those studies and you find that they're only ever on freeways like Freeway B. Do you think that might be a problem for the science? I think so. And with that in mind, let's talk about the major exit ramp. This study called fat cell size, it's looking at adipocytes, that's our fat cells. And when they get more and more engorged and larger, they become dysfunctional. And as they become dysfunctional, they can also even die. And often you'll find more and more macrophages, which are immune cells, are attending to them. And sure enough, this has a lot of associations with what they call dysmetabolism, uh, or lipid dysmetabolism, which I would call just dysfunctional lipid metabolism, and its association with cardiovascular disease. But note from this paper, from figure six, as especially visceral fat cells, those visceral fat, of course, is around the midsection especially, but it's an especially ectopic fat that as the population of those adipocytes are larger, they tend to associate with greater fasting insulin, HOMA IR, and fasting glucose. That probably doesn't surprise you. But likewise, they tend to associate with a lower and lower level of HDL cholesterol and higher triglycerides. And also, increasing LDL cholesterol. And that's why it kind of makes sense to me as to why you would see all of these go in a collinear order, why it's important to look at them all separately in that fashion, if looking at them together, as to why they would be together. Now I want to go back. I want to go back to this aspect of the lipid energy model, and I want to backtrack and say, what if this cell surface was accepting less and less triglyceride delivery? And because of that, Therefore, there's going to be less of the conversion of triglyceride-rich VLDL into triglyceride-poor LDL. And then, correspondingly, if there's less of that activity of the turnover, that means that small HDL particles are going to less and less convert to large HDL particles. Well, I know all the doctors in the room would know why I would circle this over here, right? If you've got a higher association of triglyceride-rich VLDL, small HDL, and thus, small, and thus less HDL cholesterol, that's extremely relevant because we might just be looking at a traffic jam. 